Before we start talking about setting up basic meters, one thing I want to talk about in your click track is that when you are pulling up your click and you are setting up your click and count off options, you want to make sure that your accented and unaccented are on the same notes and your velocities are at the same values. And then when you go into your click plugin, you also want to make sure that you may, if you are using this click plugin, for example, you want to go ahead and just bring these at the same values. So in other words, right now I have them at negative 6 dBFS. And when I play, I get a generic click that is always playing the same value, same intensity throughout. This is important because when you're working with an artist or a band, you're going to find that they may have meter changes that you can't anticipate when you're tracking a recording. So instead of setting up your meter changes and then having it off by a bar or off by a phrase and then throwing the band off during the tracking process, let them choose where the meter is. Let them choose where the beat is. Just simply give them an agnostic beat or a subdivided beat that just really allows them to work with any way they want. Then you can come back in later and insert your meter changes. So let's talk about that. If we want to insert our meter changes, we simply can go into our rulers, go in and choose meter, and click on the plus symbol and say, okay, I want this to be a 4-4 four four at this location. And then maybe at bar 2, I want it to be a 6-8 time. And then I can say I want it to be the eighth note getting the beat. And you can see that the meter change has been inserted. Now, there's also another way. You can go in and double click on the meter right on your transport right here and get the same dialog box. You can also go into the event menu and go into the time operations and choose change meter. Now, I like this, this particular dialog box better because I can go in there and say every next bar I want to change it. So let's say I want it at 4-4 four, four right here and then I want a 6-8 to the next bar. Now watch what happens. I'm going to go in and put a 4-4 four, four, and then hit apply. And notice how it went right back to 6-8 because it's saying this is what I had before. So this is typical in music production. You'll have a, a meter change that's only for a bar or maybe a phrase and then it switches back. So you're going to find yourself using that. Now you have the ability to do this to the end of the session or for a selected range. So I can say I want to do this for three bars. And I'm going to switch this back to 4-4 four, four, just to show that again. So you have all that uh, set up. So take advantage of this particular dial box the most. You're going to find that uh, useful. Now there is also another method. You can hold the control key down and you can click in here. So you just simply hold the control and you can choose wherever you want. Notice you have the snap to bar. So right now I have it at 8.6 at tick 381. But we're just going to go ahead and keep it at snap the bar. And it puts it right at the nearest downbeat, which is bar 9. So remember to set up your meter changes after you've done your initial tracking process, or at least the initial rough tracks so that you can get a guide of knowing where the meter changes are first. Otherwise, you can frustrate the artist when you're doing the initial tracking or the initial rough draft of the recording process.